YPG and Golden Child Kitchen teamed up for Devoted to the Sioux last evening. It was an evening billed more as an information night than a debate for the mayoral candidates. Elaine Delamatia from the Sioux Star was the moderator with Strive's Vice Chair Greg Lefebvre keeping time. War II councillors also squared off on issues pertinent to the young professionals who were actually the majority of attendees at the Grand Theatre. While no sparks flew during the mayor's debate segment, there were some noteworthy remarks made by all the candidates. It's estimated that about 100 people attended and Chair of Strive YPG Ashley Gerard said that our community, especially our young professionals, need to make their voices heard and come out to vote. The last municipal election saw less than 25,000 people vote. That was only 40.9% of the Sioux's eligible voters. Vice Chair of Strive, Greg Lefebvre, said that last evening was a big chance for young professionals to incite change in our city. Owner of Golden Child Kitchen, Angela Caputo, said that as a person who lives and owns two businesses in War II, she recognizes the importance the next four years will bring. She added that War II is especially interesting because if we thrive in our downtown core, our entire city thrives. All the municipal councillor debates, by the way, held in the On TV studios, as well as the mayor's debate from Superior Heights, are available on our YouTube channel and on SueOnline.com. Well, now Canada is the largest country with a legal national marijuana marketplace as sales began early today in Newfoundland. And there was more good news for pot aficionados hours before a handful of retail outlets opened in the country's easternmost province. A federal official told the Associated Press that Canada will pardon all those with convictions for possessing up to 30 grams of marijuana, the now legal threshold. A formal announcement is planned for later today. The official, who was not authorized to speak publicly ahead of the announcement, said those who want to take advantage of the pardons will have to apply. Canada has had legal medical marijuana since 2001, and Prime Minister Justin Trudeau's government has spent two years working toward expanding that to include so-called recreational marijuana. The goal is to better reflect society's changing opinion about marijuana and bring black market operators into a regulated system. Tom Clark, an illegal pot dealer for three decades now, was among the first to make a legal sale in Canada when his store opened at midnight local time in Portugal Cove, Newfoundland. He made his first sale to his dad and a lineup of about 50 to 100 people People waited outside his shop. The Trudeau government tabled legislation yesterday to transform the way it separates inmates in federal correctional institutions from the general prison population. Public Safety Minister Ralph Goodale says the bill is the result of recent court decisions on administrative segregation as well as recommendations from a coroner's inquest into the 2007 death of teenager Ashley Smith, who died by self-strangulation after spending more than 1,000 days in segregation. Ralph Goodale says legislation he tabled yesterday aims to transform how inmates are separated from the general prison population. The public safety minister says the proposal maintains inmates' access to rehabilitative programs. The structure and the theory uh, and the approach of a, of a structured intervention unit. The key word there is intervention. Uh, whereas un under the other system, it was segregation. Uh, so the, the whole approach has been, has been uh, uh, inverted, if you will, and it will allow us, by using the segregated, the, uh, the uh, uh, structured intervention units, it will allow us to, uh, uh, to maintain separation where separation is necessary, uh, but at the same time, the programming will continue. Yesterday, the Canadian Union of Postal Workers said it has given strike notice to Canada Post that workers could walk off the job as early as next week. The union representing 50,000 Canada Post employees said rotating strikes will begin Monday if agreements aren't reached with the urban postal operations and rural and suburban mail carriers bargaining units. The scale of the job action will depend in part on how talks go in the coming days.
but Union President Mike Palecek said they would look to avoid inconveniencing the public. Palecek also said the union decided to issue the strike notices after the nearly year-long talks stalled with the two sides fairly far apart. He said the union, which provided five days notice rather than the 72 hours required, hopes the threat of job action will help the Crown Corporation take the issues seriously. The union has been pushing for 3.5% annual wage increases, but has been met with offers of increases below inflation, while health and safety concerns have also yet to be addressed. Canada Post spokesperson John Hamilton said in a statement that the service has found common ground with the union on several issues, including workload concerns, and has made meaningful offers. The Postal Service will still be operational in the